was filled with his praises and one day when sin was as black as could be jesus came forth to be born of a virgin and dwelled among men my example is he the word became flesh and the light shined among us his glory revealed living he loved me die on a tree suffering anguish despised and rejected and bearing our sins my redeemer is he the hand that healed nations stretched out on the tree and took the nails for me could not hold him and the grave could not keep him from rising again
shut our music off, but I'm thankful he's alive this morning, aren't you? I'm thankful he's alive and well and seated at the right hand of God our Father this morning, making intercession for us. I'm thankful he's our mediator, our paraclete. I'm thankful he's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning, aren't you? Hey, you may have came to church this morning because it's Sunday, but I come to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Luke should have went on and preached, amen? <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. So thankful to have you here today, and I appreciate the choir, don't you? They do a fantastic job leading us in worship. How many of you, this is your first time visiting at First Free Will Baptist Church, if you would be so kind just to slip up your hand, God bless you. Middle section right here is owning it today. Couple on this side. Any in this section? Ah, uh, Devontae's been here. Good to see you, buddy. You healed up from Friday night? You feeling, you feeling okay? We'll anoint you and pray over you if you need it. Anyone in the balcony? First time visitor? All right, balcony folks, we've got to get to work. Second time visitor. I'm a second time visitor here today. It's my second time being here. All right, right over here. Would y'all be so kind to fill out another card just, just for our records? They say if you get somebody to fill out a card twice, you keep them. So we hope we keep you guys. God bless you. How about an applause for all of our visitors here today? God bless you. Now, as our, if you fill out this card, as our ushers come by with a bag, if you would put that in the offering bag, we would appreciate that. And as they're coming, I want you to give. And applause to welcome the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords into this service today. Oh, come on. Welcome the King. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, Father. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Hey, I'm not no cheerleader, but now you can do better than that. We're talking about the Lamb of God. Give him praise. Hallelujah. He's your Savior I'm talking about. 
That's our God. Amen. Kind Jesus, bless this offering. Bless the worship, the sermon. Lord, above all, for those that are lost, may they be saved. Strengthen the saints. And God, bring healing to the sick. And multiply this offering for your kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the sweet, sweet Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, and all God's people shouted, Amen. Amen.
when I look all around and see the good things that he does for me, I know I'm unworthy of them all. For his blessings that he freely gives, I owe my whole life to him. I've got so much to thank him for. I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for, you see, He has been so good to me, and when I think of what He's done and where He's brought me from, I've got so much to thank. While on this way, I stop just to kneel and say, Lord, thank you for all you've done for me. And then one day, I'll reach sweet heaven shore. Oh, please let me kneel once more. I've got so much to thank him for. God, so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for, you see, He has been so good to me, and when I think of what He's done and where He's brought me from, I've got so much to thank Him. And I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for. You see, He has been so good to me. And when I think of what He's done and where He's brought me from, I've got so much to thank. of the Lord this morning, and uh, we had a phenomenal men's conference last night, and about 200 men was here, and uh, four different uh, speakers, preachers, and that just poured in the Word of God to us, and it was good, it was challenging, and um, uh, thank you, church, for allowing us to host that. Thank you, Brother Kyle, for your burden. And we hope that God just takes that and, and changes families, starting with the man. And uh, man, how it spoke to, spoke to people last night. But uh, we opened up in worship last night, and I'd been thinking all week about um, what to do for, for worship. And um, come across a song, and man, how it started speaking uh, to me, and, and got to having some thoughts about um, what if we come in, you know, I feel like we get in a routine and we just come into church, as I said earlier, because it's Sunday. We get up and we get dressed and we come to the house of the Lord, but, you know, what if we come to the house of the Lord every, every Sunday expecting God to do something in our lives? We come just hoping that the Spirit's going to be here and that He's going to move and bless somebody. But what if we come expecting it? What if we come expecting it for ourselves? What if we come expecting God to restore the joy that the devil has stolen from us? What if we come expecting Him to restore that shout that we've not that we've not had in a while? What if we come expecting Him? to restore those tears. You know why I'm having those thoughts? Because I've been in that position myself. And uh, it's easy to get entangled in the world and not not saying doing bad things, but you get caught up in the cares and things that's going on in the world. And um, 
We put, we put our salvation and we put um, our relationship with Jesus Christ on the back burner. But I think it's time this morning that we raise up here at First Free Will Baptist Church and we say that we're tired of just an ordinary worship service. We're going to come and we're going to do business with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We got camp meetings starting in, in October, but it would be all right if it started right here this morning. I'm tired of the same old things of tradition wearing out your name. I'm tired of a man-made worship hour. I'm tired. I'm tired of a song without no praise where worshiping you is out of place. I'm tired of religious formalities. I'm tired. So send the rain. Send the fire. Send the wind. Send the Holy Ghost and power. Send the rain. Send the fire. Send the wind, send the Holy Ghost and power, send the rain. We're ready for revival, Lord. We're ready to walk through that door. We're ready, Lord. Oh, let it pour. We're ready, Lord. We're ready, Lord, enough is enough. We're ready to drink from your cup. We're ready, Lord, oh, fill it up. We're ready, Lord, so send the rain, send the fire, and send the wind, send the Holy Ghost and power, send the rain. Send the wind, send the Holy Ghost and power, send the rain. We're ready for revival, Lord. We're ready to walk through that door. Why don't you worship We're him ready, like Lord, you're ready for oh, revival this morning? Pour. We're ready. Oh, he's worthy of our praise. We're ready. to drink from your cup. We're ready, Lord. Oh, fill it up. We're ready, Lord. So send the rain and send the fire and send the wind and send the Holy Ghost and power. In the Holy Ghost and power, in the rain. I'm tired of the same old things of tradition wearing out your name. I'm tired of a man made worship hour. I'm tired. I'm tired of a song without no praise. We're worshiping you. Is out of he got healing this I'm tired week. of religious formalities. I'm tired. So send the rain, send the fire, and send the wind, send the Holy Ghost and power.
is enough. We're ready to drink from your cup. We're ready, Lord. Oh, fill it up. We're ready, Lord. So sin. In the Holy Ghost and power, sin the rain, sin the fire, and sin the wind. Sin the Holy Ghost and power, sin the rain, sin the fire, sin the wind. Send the Holy Ghost and power, send the rain. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Stand all over the house. Working would you? in this place, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, yes. moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here.
You are here, turning lives around. Yes. I worship you. I worship you. Sing it, church. Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Sing it again. Solomon chapter 2 in verse 12. Boy, God has done a work here. Amen. I sure wouldn't get in the Lord's way. I can tell you that. The Bible says in Song of Solomon chapter 2 in verse 12, the flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of the birds is come. And the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. Kind Jesus, bless the reading of your word. God, I pray that you touch us and give us the unction from the Holy One. God, as we stand in this sacred place today, you are here. God, I ask that you touch my mind, my stammering tongue, my lips of clay. God, may we bring joy to the lives of your people, encouragement and confidence that you are our God and we are your people. And above all, for those that are lost, may they be saved. Bless the reading of your word in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the sweet, sweet Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people said. Amen. You can be seated if you can today. Before we get started, I do want to say thank you for the Men that gathered here last night, and the young men, and Brother Kyle for what he did to put that together, it was, it was wonderful. And not only that, for the ladies that served all those men, God bless you. We're just some ordinary men, but we have extraordinary women in this church. I went by a guy last night, and he was talking... He was, it was a, a couple, they were Catholic, and they heard the family sing, and he had a lot of questions. And I hope they're here today. I didn't see them right off, but he, his wife asked more questions than him. And she, the husband looked and said, well, we may just surprise you over there sometime. She said, no, I think we need to go. I said, I like her. And he kept talking, well, we might come. She's just over there shaking her head. I said, sir, with all due respect, I said, you may be the head of the house, but she's the neck that turns it. I said, I'll see you at free will. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but in our text today, we started this message last week, and we'll try to finish it today, the, the song of the birds. The birds are created to fly. But not only were they created to fly, they were created to hatch young. They were created also to sing. And one might ask, why would they sing? In our text, we understand that winter is now past and springtime has come. The weather begins to warm up. The flowers begin to bloom. The bees begin to buzz. The butterfly begins to fly. 
I love spring of the year. I also love fall. But here in the spring, it's, it's resurrection time. We observe the resurrection about the springtime every year. And as the songs that we sung talked about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In case you have any doubt in your mind before you came to this service that he really rose again, what was that you felt as the choir was singing? What was that presence that's going from breast to breast, aisle to aisle, and heart to heart? I'll tell you who that is. That's the Holy Spirit. He is real. And he is present in this service today. In Psalms 148, we find out that that the birds are supposed to sing and give praise. The Bible commands everything in heaven and earth to praise the Lord. In verse 10, he said, beast and cattle and creeping things and flying fowl. Let them praise the Lord. In Psalms 149, he says, to sing unto the Lord, Brother Wood, a new song, a new song of, of praise. Not only should birds praise the Lord in every creeping thing, but I believe that we, now get on board with this just a minute. Ephesians 5, 19 says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. But listen, if the birds are to sing and every creeping thing are to praise the Lord, what do you think we who were lost and in sin bound by the claws of Satan called upon the living God of glory that left his throne to come to where we are and set us free, thank God, through the love displayed at the cross. And there we have been set free from sin, set free from self, set free from Satan. Therefore, if anybody's got any praise, it ought to be the redeemed of heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, thank God. What's wrong with the praise? I go to church after church, month after month, and sometimes week after week, and state after state, and denomination after denomination. And I want to tell you something. Those that claim to be something most of the time ain't got nothing, and those that think that they have something, they don't know what it is. But thank God I'm glad that I know who I am in Christ, and I know what this church is built on. It's built on Jesus Christ, and nothing less than his righteousness. Hallelujah. I'm going to praise him. Praise God. People can sit in their pew, sit there like a wooden Indian and act like they've been baptized in pickle juice, but bless God, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to lift my hands and glorify the king because he's my king and he's faithful to his promises. Look out, birds. I'm going to keep singing. Amen. We talked about why they, they sing a the reasons why, well, they're commanded to. But not only that, birds love to sing. And then the third reason, they sing because they're trying to win a mate. I said last week, we've got some birds in this church need to be singing. Amen. We got some young birds, middle-aged birds, old birds. Y'all just start singing. <laughs> sing good. Amen. Sing with everything you got. Sing to the Lord. And once that bird wins that mate, though, I read where he's got to keep singing. <laughs> keep singing. And the mockingbird, the many-tongued mimic. That mockingbird can imitate a, a door squeak, a dog barking, a, a, a symphony even that I read and studied where in Washington, D.C., the National Symphony Orchestra was playing, and they couldn't be outdone by a mockingbird who was playing or singing the actual fruit, the flute, rather. He could probably, if fruit makes a sound, he can do it, amen. <laughs> the mockingbird and also the, the cardinal. We talked about the cardinal. And one thing that I want to add to what I, I said, that, that, that cardinal starts singing early, second or third week. 
There between the ages of three and four weeks for sure, they begin to sing. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and the colonel last night mentioned this. Remember thy creator in the days of thy youth. We need to remember the Lord. We need to live for the Lord in the days of our youth. So many of our youth today, they're, they're lost and undone. Our schools are, are not in good shape. No matter what you hear, the majority of the students are lost without the Lord. Many of them may go to church, but let me go ahead and everybody look up here. Don't look around, don't talk. Let me say, especially young people, just going to church does not make you saved. Amen. Going to church is not going to get you to heaven. But when you get saved, you'll want to go to church. Amen. And I believe you'll want to be there faithfully. Not only that, being baptized won't get you to heaven. Being baptized is not going to get you in. I've said this for years. You can be baptized and every mud puddle to the tadpoles know your social security number. And you can have your name on every church roll in the tri-state area, North Georgia and Western North Carolina. That will not get you into heaven. But when you call upon the Lord Jesus Christ in a way that you're famished to be saved and born again, then hallelujah, God takes up residence in you. He takes his blood, washes your sin away, and then, my friend, you are on your way to glory. Give him praise in his house. Hallelujah. The cardinal, not only did they sing at a young age, they will fight for their possessions. Now we're Christians. Well, well we shouldn't fight. What Bible are you reading? Oh, well, 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 we shouldn't fight. Hey, Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on. You know what laying hold on is, don't you? You're going to lay hold on somebody. Lay hold on eternal life. We have to fight for everything that we have in Christ Jesus. Why? Because there's a thief. There's a robber. He's out there. He's wanting to destroy and, and, and devour. And he's wanting to depress. and discuss. He's wanting to do everything he can to take away the good things that God has given his people. You know, I believe that we ought to fight for our peace. I believe we ought to fight for our joy, fighting for our love, fighting for our church, fighting, fighting for our marriages. Can I get a witness? Listen, you men and you women, if you've got a spouse, you've got to fight for your house. You've got to fight for your children. Don't stop fighting for your children. Oh, you might say, well, everything's good about my child. You don't never know what's going to be going on in that bedroom when the door is shut. You never know what's going on in, at school. You never know when they, whether they leave your house and they go somewhere else. You don't know what kind of thinking that they're going to think. You don't know what kind of devils are going to be in their way. That's why we ought to baptize our young people. Baptize them with prayer. Baptize them with the Spirit of God. Pray the Spirit of God on them. And that way, whenever one of our young people from free will they come walking down the hall everybody else said whoo they got something on them now bless the Lord and they ain't trying to get away they want to follow them they understand they talk different than everybody else they respond different to negativity than everybody else I want to be like them that's the kind of young people we want to have birth in this church walking up and down the halls running up and down the courts and the fields we want the, the world to see Christ in our young people amen but you'll have to fight for it You'll get bit. The devil will allow you to get busy and even good things will go on and, and you'll forget to pray. And then before you know it, you're neglecting to be able to take that time and pray, and pray specifically for that young person that you have in your home that God has blessed you with. But not only that, you may even get so busy that you forget others. How important is it for us to pray for those that are dear to us their friends. How important is that because friends influence? But we want to make sure that they get so much of the Word of God here that our children and our teenagers and our young adults are the influence. Amen. 
I believe that we, these things are worth fighting for. We talked about the sparrow, how that he sings all the time. One I didn't get to was the nightingale. The nightingale sings all the time as well. The song of the nightingale has been more generally admired and praised than the song of any other European bird. The nightingale, the male sings by night as well by day. And you cannot fail to appreciate his song. In full song, he can sing around the clock only with few intermissions. He sings, God give me Give me the desire to sing around the clock. In the good times and the bad, St. Francis is said to have competed with a nightingale and singing praises to God, and he was defeated. In Psalms chapter 42, David is going through a dark valley. His son Absalom, that, that one, that beautiful, beautiful son of his, he had long, beautiful hair. But David is being hunted by him like an animal. David is living in exile. At this point, David is unable to get to the house of the Lord. He's discouraged. He's despaired. And David is defeated. Have you ever been through that valley? Boy, I sure have. But however, in verse 8, here's what David said. He has given me a song in the night. Have you ever been given a song in the night? Most of the songs that I write don't come out of the good times. They come out of the bad times. It's easy to sing when the sun is shining brightly. It's easy to sing when the bills are paid. It's easy to sing when everything is going good. But it's quite another feat to be able to sing when things are going bad. Oh, my. I can't help but think about Paul and Silas. They've been out ministering. And I'm not talking about coming in here where everybody appreciates the message. I'm not talking about coming in here where the choir gets up and hits a grand slam and then the special music rises, raises people to their feet and everyone is worshiping the Lord. No, Paul and Silas is preaching and people are cursing them. They're threatening them. And one little old young maiden's walking around being used by the people of that day and she is reciting everything that they're saying, mocking him. Mocking them. Everything they say she's repeating, but it's a mockery. That's quite different, isn't it? And you know what? Finally, the apostle Paul had enough. And he turned around to that woman that was possessed with the spirit of divination. And he commanded that spirit to come out of her. And the spirit went out. And all of a sudden, it caused turmoil in the economic world of the devil. So you know what they did? They took them and they put them in prison. But they did something to them before they did. They they whipped them. Look at here. Their backs are bleeding. Their feet are bruised. But their hearts are broken. Those three things. And while their back is bleeding. And while their feet is bruised. And with broken hearts as they're in that inner part of that prison. Paul and Silas in the night, in the dark, in the turmoil, in the tribulation, under the persecution, somehow down deep in them was living the Holy Ghost, thank God, and they began to sing a song. And they began to rejoice. It caught the ear of God and God liked it and began to pat his foot, knock the earth off its axis, knock the jail cells all open and bless God, there they are and they find themselves free. Have you ever thought in the middle of your valley, in the middle of your darkness, in the middle of your depression, if you could just somehow get a song somewhere down deep out and begin to sing. It might not sound too good starting off, but just keep singing and keep singing. 
singing and all of a sudden right there in your darkness the light of glory will shine in on you and you'll have victory in your life once again. Sing on, saint of God. Oh my. I couldn't help but think about H.G. Spafford. Horatio Spafford was a great lawyer in Chicago in the 1800s, late 1800s. He was friends with the world-renowned preacher D.L. Moody. God had blessed him. He had properties. He had a family, but he had daughters. And he had a son. And that son was born, and he was junior, and he loved that little boy. But it wasn't long. That little boy was taken away by scarlet fever. The great fire of Chicago took his properties, the majority of them. He found himself struggling to make ends meet. Finally, God blessed him. As he served the Lord, he was known by everyone in Chicago as a devout believer in the Lord. Finally, he got enough saved up and he thought, I'm going to send my family over to England. Moody's going to be over there preaching. I'm going to send them. He sent his wife and his four daughters over to England ahead of him. He stayed behind for some business meetings and would join them later. It wasn't long on that trip that there was another vessel that struck that ship that they were sailing on. And that ship went down. A few people were saved and one of them was his wife. And he received a telegram that said, saved alone. As soon as H.D. Spafford got the opportunity, he got on a ship to go to find his beloved. As they were sailing out across that Atlantic Ocean to England, the captain came and beckoned Mr. Spafford to come. He showed him the very place where his daughters perished in the waters. It was then that he went back to his room and when he did, he wrote the song that we still sing today. When peace like a river attendeth my way. Oh, thank God. He said, it is well with my soul. See, in the life of a believer, it doesn't matter how bad it gets. God's got a big old barrel of grace up there in glory. <laughs> and thank God it's kind of like that widow woman that was there with that boy. When Elijah passed by and when she fed him first, thank God there was always meal in the barrel and always oil in the cruise. Let me report to you today in Hayesville, North Carolina, at First Free Will Baptist Church, thank God there's still meal in the barrel of glory, and there's still oil in the cruise of heaven. And thank God it ain't gonna run out, it ain't gonna run low. Praise God, he's got grace for every need that you have, no matter what darkness you're going through. Just sing a song in the midnight hour. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Go ahead and praise him. He's worth it. Brings me to the morning dove. As I hurry along, the morning dove, this bird sings a sad song all the time. That's where he gets his name. The slow, mellow, five-syllable notes evoke from a profound melancholy. That morning dove, he sings a song of gloom. I've known some Christians like the morning dove. <laughs> They're always down, always discouraged, always depressed. You go to Wednesday night prayer meeting and they stand up and testify you need to take four Advil and go to bed. Amen. <laughs> Never got anything good to say. 
Some people you see in Walmart and you go 10 rows over trying to get away from them. Don't act like you hadn't done it. <laughs> it's when you pull up to that gas pump and you were going to fill up. But all of a sudden, two gallons was plenty to get you down the road. The morning dove. Boys, I studied, I went back and I read about those spies in Numbers chapter 13 and 14. They come back. How many were there? Do you know? How many spies were they? Oh, come on, you Bible scholars. Twelve. I will give $20 without you looking if you can name one spy outside of Joshua and Caleb. Can anybody? I can't either. <laughs> and I read them this week. But you know what? I read through them and I thought, who cares about those guys? I don't. That's old negative Nelly right there. I could name them all. Every one of them. We don't hear them. No. Who do we hear about? Joshua and Caleb. There's a reason for that. You know, there's a lot of people that I don't remember in my life. When I went to school and I went to college, there's a lot of people. I don't even remember who they were. I had class with them. I played ball with them. But I don't remember their names. But you know what? Those people that were faithful and those people that worked hard and those people that were kind, I remember them. I remember those people. Boy, and I, I began to read that and I got fired up this week. I'm telling you, reading about how the, that they went, went over and they were instructed by Moses to go and, and to go look at the land. And here's what they said. They said, surely it floweth with milk and honey. They all said that. Matter of fact, they went over there and I remember they had a cluster of grapes in the 13th chapter, 23rd verse. One cluster of grapes and they bear between them upon a staff. Man, I'd like to have some of that jelly. I mean, one grape make 12 jars. Our old Mace Jackson, when I was a boy, he said, he said, and they went over there, Scotty, and he said, whenever they, they seen them grapes, said one of them, said they sucked that grape out of that, and they took the, the skin of that grape and put it over his head and swam back across Jordan, didn't want to get his head wet. <laughs> Big grape. Well, 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 the Bible says that they bore it between two men, a cluster of them on a, on a staff. That's big grapes. Yeah. Grapes like volleyballs and basketballs. and Oh, my. And they're talking about, oh, man, this is a land of milk and honey. <laughs> when somebody asked me one time, said, you got something right here? And I said, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I said, that's milk from being over in Canaan land. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> You know, they went over. Caleb and Joshua had a different attitude, didn't they? Listen, what they said, they said, here's what they said after it's a land flowing with milk and honey. And then they said, nevertheless, the people be strong. And then they said, the, the cities are walled. And then they said, and the children of Anak are there. So you're getting all this negative stuff. And I like this right here. This make a great message for you preachers and teachers. In verse 30 of chapter 13. And Caleb stealed the people. <laughs> Stealing the people. S-T-I-L-L. -L. Before Moses and said this. Let us go up at once. And possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. So you know what these 10 represent the people that say that you can. 
But Caleb and Joshua represent the believer that has their faith in God that says, yes, we can. Let's go up right now and possess it. You know why? Because the 10 were operating in the flesh, but the two were operating in the power of God. The 10 were operating in their thinking, but the two were operating in power and glory and majesty of our God. Ladies and gentlemen, we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us and if God brings us to it, he'll take us through it. We've just got to believe him. Amen. They went on. After after Caleb steps up and says, no, let's go right now. We can do this. And then they kept talking. And they said, well, we, we, we saw these people. They're great in stature. They said, we saw the giants there. And they said this, we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Now, you can look through the lens of secularism. Or you can look through the lens of the Scripture. I choose to look through the lens of the Scripture. Oh, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. And you know what? They kept talking. Oh, Joshua, the son of Nun, he, he steps up and again. He said, it's an exceeding good land. He says this, if, if the Lord delight in us, he will bring us into this land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. And then they said, don't rebel against the Lord. Don't do that. He said, the Lord is with us. Fear them not. And you know what the rest of them said? Let's stone, let's stone these guys. That's what they said. Let's stone them. They're crazy. We can't do it. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, don't you believe with me that we're living in a world where people are doubting what God can do? What God can do for you, what God can do for your family, what God can do for your school, what God can do for the church. We've got to believe and pray and believe. And why was there two? Why did God put them two? I'm just old-fashioned enough to believe. If any two touch and agree on any one thing, it shall be done. Hallelujah. I said, let me get this side. I said, If any two shall touch and agree on any one thing, it shall be done. Amen? See, the problem is, Amos said, can two walk together except they be agreed? The problem with the church world today, Satan has got this one against that one and that one against this one and we can't go there and we can't do this. I talked to Sister Polly this morning. I said, listen, I am a Christian. I believe the denomination is of the devil in many, many ways. God is coming back for one church, one church only, and that is those who are without sin and the salvation Thanks be unto God that I'm just who I am by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Why, if you, if you had to be a certain denomination to get in, there'd be a lot of people who wouldn't make it. No, you got to know the Lord in salvation. What about the hermit thrust? The hermit thrust sings a lovely song, but his name suggests that it hates company of men. Sings in the deep northern far, forest away from the human ear. And its song is no good to anyone. See, God did not give a song to us or save us to be hermits. He saved us that we might share our song. That we, he saved us that we might share salvation. That's why he saved us. Oh, God will give you rest. Psalms 55 and 6. Oh, that I had wings like a dove, that I would fly away and be at rest. God will rest you. He saved us quickly, the Mimi bird. The Mimi bird lives in South Africa. I think you know where this is going. (laughs) And its song consists of me, me. Me, 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 me. Me, me. Me, 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 <laughs> He's not done. Me, me. Then that's what he's saying. And some people's 
Lives are like this bird. They sing a selfish song. Their lives are only happy when they're singing the me, me song. That's those that won't give, amen? amen. Offering bag comes by. Oh, I've, I've seen it done in churches over my life. Put in $5, take back four. <laughs> I served in, in a church one, one time, my, pre, in my first pastorate. Man put in 10, took 20. <laughs> God help him. Maybe he just didn't know. In Luke chapter 12, we find such a man. He's singing a me-me song. He's living a me-me life. It's all about him. The rich man had bountiful fields. But greed filled his heart and he lost sight of others. And in the story, he uses six eyes, five mys in his vocabulary. He says, my fruit... My barns, my goods, and my soul. His vocabulary does not include God, the church, or others. May God help us in all that we do to include God, the church. And others. Let me close with the swan. The swan is absolutely one of the most beautiful birds created. It said the swan can be singing as he dies. There are cases on record where scientists who have heard the sad yet beautiful song of a swan singing while it's mortally wounded, dying yet still singing. May we, as servants of God, be on the battlefield. And no bad, how bad, rather, we get injured. May we still sing a beautiful song. I've stood by the bed of loved ones and friends where the songs of Zion were heralded in that room. I'll never forget my good friend Roger Duncan telling about his mother passing away. And all the children and the grandchildren had gathered around her bed. And with that little faint voice, and she sang, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. Come on, band. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. They said it was like angels came down in the room, and gathered around, surrounded them as they sang, and with her last breath, praised the Lord. May we, as God's people, be like the swan. May that be our song when people speak evil against us. May we keep singing. Oh, when people accuse us of things we haven't done, may we sing. When people tell us that we can't do what God has called us to do, may we sing. And when it comes our time, to cross old chilly Jordan, may we sing a song of his mighty grace and mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. As we bow our heads momentarily, if you're here today and you'd say, Preacher, I'm not saved, would you pray for me? I'm not prepared for death. I'm not saved, or at best, I'm not sure. Would you pray for me? Is there one? Could you just slip up your hand and by that say pray for me? 
man, woman, boy, or girl. I'm unsaved, or at best, I'm not sure. If I died right now, I'd go to heaven. Pray for me. Is there one? According to your testimony, you're saved. How many of you would be here today and say, I've got some just bad stuff I'm going through and I need some prayer. Pray for me that I'd be able to sing through this time. Could you slip up your hand? God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless the hands. Kind Jesus, Lord, we love you. And we thank you for the song you've given us. May we ever sing it and proclaim it and hold to you. We ask this now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and all God's people shouted, Amen. Let us stand together. If you need to pray, you come on. Just as I am without one but
camp meeting starting October 13th that morning and also the 12th, the Saturday before that's the Jacqueline Crisp car show right here. Do we know what time that's starting, Jackie? 11 to 3 on the 12th. Car show, please come. Uh, listen, bring some cars. I'm, I'm going to try to bring one, sell one, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all bring a lot of money, and we'll make sure the church gets its part. Amen? So um, that'll be on the 12th, 13th, camp meeting through Thursday night, okay? Mike Blanton and Evidence is going to be here. Um, the Parsons are going to be here. Joy Ayers are going to be here. Gary Lewis is going to be preaching. Um, and then Hoy is going to be preaching. Roger Lee Duncan the second. And get this, Brother Roger Duncan Sr. will be here for the camp meeting. Amen? <laughs> That's going to be great. Brother Mike and Brother Mike and Jim McComas are going to be here. Tammy Jones Robinette. And on, on, and on Thursday night is going to be uh, 11th hour. So it's going to just be a great, great week. The barbecue starts in October every weekend. And we have information on that as well back there at the desk. So make sure that we have Brother Roy. Go back there now. You get them people signed up. I'm going to write a song. Barbecue, barbecue, come eat boy, old boy Roy's barbecue. All right, I'm going to write that song. Uh, that barbecue sale is the second, third, and fourth weekends of October. Um, as Chris said, please sign up in the lobby to help with that. There will not be a, mar a barbecue meeting today, unlike what was in the flyer, but they are wanting to sell Brunswick stew this year. If you have a good recipe, uh, please see Roy or Shannon for that. It'd be a help for them. If you need somebody to sample it, let me know, and I can pick the winner. Um, Donald Davenport, Brunswick Stew. Youth 12 and up, a teen class is going for pizza after church, then to the movies to see Overcom Overcomer. They need to leave uh, as soon as possible after church, so meet up here in this section where they're at. They're meeting in the... Gyms. All right, meet in the gym. They'll be back around 5.30 tonight. So um, so uh, if you're going to the movies, please go to the gym immediately following service. Remember, tea time is this coming Thursday. Uh, it's a picnic, so please bring enough food for everybody. Uh, going to share and have a good time, and that'll be, a, that'll be Thursday at 6.30. Correct, 6 o'clock, Sister Sharon said. And then remember uh, choir practice this coming Wednesday at uh, 6 o'clock, and then I got the sign from Scotty. We'll have a deacons meeting today at 4 o'clock, so all deacons, please come today at 4. Tea times Hamilton Gardens and how was he? All right, let's get our hands in there and exercise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May God bless you. Be safe. Have a great day. Tonight, service at 5 p.m. right here.